Hello, Akron fans, and welcome to this exhibition match on Kratoria between J. Raccoon and Perlox. This is going to be a rather different match than usual, because Kratoria is a rather new map, and, well, okay, it's actually an older map that's been updated quite recently and made fairly different from its old incarnation. For example, these Chrono Porters did not exist in the old incarnation, they are now in there. Also, one big change for this map, kind of unique, is that there are neutral crates outside of the expansion crates. So, the nearest expansion you need to actually destroy neutral crates that are about 500 health, which is quite a lot. Most beginning units will not be able to take it out in less than a minute or two. So, it does limit expansions. Anyway, we see Perlox is going for Grekim, and is very rapidly going for... Wow, he's going for an Octo Rush, probably going to be echoing this out, it's probably not going to be permanent. So that was Jericho. Perlox is going for Grekim as well, however, and he is going... Well, he's going for economy, he's at... Well, 25 second mark. Jericho's attack happened near the present. And as we can see, there's the... Oh, I'm sorry. As we can see, there is... There's J. Raccoon's Octos right there, so... J. Raccoon going for an Octo Rush, which probably won't actually be a permanent rush, while Perlox is going for Economy. He is setting up both QP and LC, getting... Planning to get five LCRPs and two QPRPs. And his Faro and Seppi are going for a walk. So he is definitely going for a walk in this map. Probably going to be going for the teleporter and then teleporting to a more convenient expansion. Probably this one here or maybe the one in the bottom right corner. Note that this map is actually a little bit outdated. It's been updated since this game was played. In the updated version, there's fewer resource crates in this expansion and this expansion. There are more resource crates in these expansions, but also they're still covered by enemy crates or neutral hostile crates. Anyhow. J. Raccoon's Rush is... Here it is. J. Raccoon's Octos coming in through. This is our Prolox's point of view at the 133 mark. They're about halfway across the map. While Prolox's Seppi and Octo are about ready to teleport, and they are teleporting into this expansion. Interesting. I'm not sure why he tele teleported there instead of walking there, but it's slightly longer to walk. It's just perhaps, probably for interception, to avoid interception. That way that his Forces can be intercepted by J. Raccoon trying to go in here and stopping them since they never went there. They teleported from here. Anyhow, he is clearly abandoned his main base. He's going straight for this expansion, and that will mean the Octo Rush is not going to be quite the same as it would have been. It looks like it was going to hit around three minutes into the future from where we are now. So the six minute mark is when it would have hit. But yeah, it looks like J. Raccoon is, in fact, echoing this out. Just going to check from his point of view. He. Yeah, he is definitely echoing it out. He's turning into RPs. It really doesn't matter, though. However, the Octos would have been able to deal a lot of damage to the main base. Would have been able to deal damage to the RPs. There is no triad units there to... Oops, throw here. No triads to actually take out. That's the only thing. It's one thing to keep in mind. And he is trying to expand to his natural, so he is going for the harder to get expansion, but the nearer expansion. And the Octo will be able to take it out in about two minutes or so. While... Jiracoon is looks like he's setting up more progen orders, setting up his units to go go towards the third expansion, set up progenerators there, and start building more RPs. Perlux, on the other hand, at the 251 mark, has set up more RPs. He's setting up all the crates in the northwest side of this base, and he's starting to set up the more separated crates in the southeast side. No tech from here. Both players are just going heavily for economy. Although Jericoon isn't going quite as heavily for economy because he is trying to destroy this set of neutral crates to get the nearer expansion. His, let's see, he does have the Seppi and Faro walking towards the third expansion, the southeast corner, but or not quite corner, but the southeast center area. But that's still taking longer than Prolux's. So Prolux is definite advantage. Prolux actually, the 310 mark does, ha or 320 mark, sorry, does have a reef. He's likely getting tech. Sorry, he's not getting tech yet, but he will be getting tech soon. This is definitely going in Perlox's favor right now. Jericoon does have a reef, he doesn't have tech either, but Perlox is definitely going to be having an easier time getting through this game. He has more resources to start out. He is not bothering with this expansion with the blocked up crates, he's going straight for the third. And that is one of the reasons why I actually mentioned that Crime Everest should be changed, because this expansion, there's no reason not to go for it, and there's not much reason to go for this expansion except near the very end of the game. So now this expansion in a later map has more resource crates and the southwest northeast expansions have fewer. It's still easier to go with this expansion, but it's more worth it to break the crates down. 
And now we see that Perlox is going for advanced structures at 336 mark. Jarakun is not going for advanced structures yet. If he if he is, is in the future. No, he is not going for it. He's only about 15 seconds up from Perlox anyway, although well, Perlox has just jumped forward a minute. And he is expanding a bit more slowly to the southeast central expansion. And it looks like he has his triad set up so he can actually expand to both the southeast corner and southeast central expansions. Though this may not do him much good. And he does have Faro actually coming in here. It is harassing per Jarakun's base. Far instead of coming in here, trying to expand, and finding that Perlox has already expanded here. Perlox still has a massive resource advantage, he just hasn't used it yet, but like I said, he's a minute down. Actually, not like I said, because that was different. He did move. So he's not a minute down, he is setting up units to defend against this. He will be able to defend against that Seppi and Faro quite handily. This will not be an issue for Perlox. So Perlox maintains his advantage, and J Raccoon still kind of in behind, but we'll see what he actually manages to do. He has broken free two crates. Well, two sides of two, one side of each of two crates. Trying to break another side free. And he is also setting up more RPs. And by the way, I should point out, these crates are actually considered hostile to both players. They're not considered to be friendly to either player. So units will automatically attack them. They won't actually have to be targeted. Though this is a bit of a double-edged sword. It means that both units will... Units will not have to be automatically, or manually told to go for it. They will automatically go for attacking it. However, it also means that units going past these crates, or fighting near these crates, may end up attacking them instead of just moving along. Anyway, Octo's being set up for J Raccoon, right next to Perlux's basically new main. Since his actual main has been mostly abandoned, although he does have his Articus there, he is not, he's only using for command, he is not building up another triad, but if he does lose this triad, he will be able to rebuild easily. And like I said before, Perlux does have a massive resource advantage, he doesn't have any more tech than he had before, but he does have a lot of resources. And J Raccoon, back when he is about a minute and a half up from- no, sorry, that's the observer. J Raccoon, about a minute and a half up from here, is continuing to build up his economy, getting another triad here in the area between the southeast bases, and getting more economy as well. He just sells his main triad and his main base. He is, does have a spire, he has not started building air units yet, he does have the resources, but he hasn't started. He is legal class, so I'm guessing he's going for mass Sebi Lego. That's a very common strategy for Grekum. So he's probably going to build a Farapod and Octopod, use that to get Sepi Legos, and then use that to try to take advantage of, well, Perlox's focus on economy and not much focus on units. But like I said before, Perlox has a massive resource advantage, and he is getting, he has Chronoporting, sorry, not getting, he has Chronoporting. So he appears to be going for a base class Chronoport attack. A base class Uppercut is a strategy which has been used a fair amount in recent times. It's actually kind of an expansion on an older strategy, but the fact that it's base class units as opposed to Farapods is the main difference. That being said, Aspire is being built for Prolox at the 523 mark, and note that J Raccoon is about 3 minutes up from there, he's at the 740 mark. So that's 2 and a half minutes up. And he is going... Actually, jump back to the 612 mark. That Octo is still going for the RP crates, he has mostly broken them free. While the Triad in the southeast corner is going for more RPs, he's getting a lot more RPs, Octo is being built up sent out. So this corner base has, or no, sorry, the central base in the southeast has been taken. Corner base has not been taken at all. He's not going for that. I'm not sure why. And here we have the Faropod from Perlox. This will very likely become, both, both players at the same time, the 630 mark. This will very likely become, oh yeah, see, he's going for the Octo right now. But that Octo has a track but looks like Perlox recommanding his Faropod to get around there. And he is going for an uppercut, going very heavily for an uppercut. This Faropod I have not seen a Farapod Chrono Rush in a long time, by the way, but he is going for... Well, okay, it's not super Chrono Rush. He can jump back to the 4-minute mark, but it's not the same as both before. It was a 2-minute mark rush. It doesn't look like Farapod is going for an actual Chrono Rush yet. Ah, here we are. He was just figuring out where to go for his Chrono Rush, and now that he knows where to go... There he goes. He has Chrono Ported back, so he's around here, hereabouts in the timeline. We will see it once the blue time wave comes along and propagates it forward. Now, j is not totally aware of this, but he is aware now. Chronoporter pressure detected has been shown for him, so he knows the Chronoport has happened here. He didn't see the Farapod go back, but he he's aware Chronoport has happened, so he has to be careful about that, although admittedly, this base is pretty much moot if that Farapod actually managed to get free reign. And that means that the Faro coming in here might be able to deflect it. I don't, I don't know when this Faro was exactly built. That will be very important. And more Faro's coming through, and... And we are seeing the Octopus doing what they do best, which is tear apart ground units with ease. These Octopods are dealing tons of damage, just getting rid of... They did lose 
a couple of their members, but they managed to take out all those Faros, about half a dozen Faros that came in, and the Faros moving in for an attack, just destroying this base. However, this blue time wave is where things start to get dangerous, because, or maybe not, actually. It looks like very little damage is actually dealt. This Farapod didn't manage to do a whole lot. This, this blue is here, from Perlux's point of view, this blue here is what the Farapod did. But it didn't manage to do very much, and that's kind of unfortunate, I guess, actually. I mean, really, Farapod didn't really end up changing anything, it just ended up dying. So anyway, Perlux not having too much to worry about in the past from that Farapod. I don't know if Perlux is actually going to be going for an additional attack or not, but it looks like he is building more Farapods. He is definitely... And more Sepipods as well. Getting an expansion. The Northwest Corner expansion. He's going for that. So he still has more expansions. More economy than J-Raccoon. And he has a lot of units too. But he is now Chronoporting them back. So he will be going for another Chronoport attack. Or Chronoport defense rather. But he may be going from here to an attack. And no he is. Is he going for Chronoport? Yes he is. He's Chronoporting back to Farapod. And he is not following it by the way. He is just. He did get his Chronoport on the timeline. But he. He's probably more concerned about these Faros that are coming in. And will likely be dealing a lot of damage fairly soon. I don't know if they're going to be chronoported back. He does have... No, he doesn't have the resources to chronoport them all back. He only has 228 QP. We need about 400 or 500 or so. So let's just double check. It would be 32 each. So yeah, there's 8 of them. About... Yeah, actually, we had an... he'd had enough now. Now he'd have about enough. I don't know if he is going for that chronoport, though. He does have a Seppi pod coming in to support them. The Faros is coming in for a straight attack. This is very near the unplayable pass. The 846 mark. And Jay Raccoon is about 15 minutes ahead, or 15 seconds ahead, sorry. He will be unaware of this happening, except for what's on his timeline. He's not focusing on it right now. And it's happening in the past relative to him. There is a Farapod coming in as well. It looks like it is going to be Chronoported back. Not sure if it's just it or everything. I would think, yeah, it's just it. He doesn't have a lot of Chrono Energy, so he can't do everything without using the Arcticus. Although, using the Arcticus would be a really good idea right about now. The Chronoport back, he has the resources to do it, and the Arcticus would save the Chrono Energy needed. And it looks like the Farpod and Sepipod are here to actually deal with this. Jay Raccoon jumping back a bit further, about 10 seconds down from here. He does have a Farpod coming up to try to help out, deal with this, but it's not going to be enough. Sepipod is going to be able to destroy it along with the Sepi. That Farpod will be useless, and no Sepi Lee was coming up for Jay Raccoon, so Prolox is... He also has the Farpod here, looks like it was probably chronoported back. Or no, it wasn't, it was just a straight up attack. He is chronoporting it back now, however, the 953 mark, probably about to the eight, or sorry, the 653 mark or so, or 7 minute mark. He is chronoporting that back just to deal with damage further in the past. However, that damage is as good as dealt. There is nothing that Perlox really has to worry about right now. Jay Raccoon has pretty much lost his main base. Perlox is jumping around the Implode Pass, making sure the attacks are going as well as he thinks they are, and they definitely are. The Implode Pass is totally safe. Jay Raccoon, however, does have... He does have Chrono Porting, but he doesn't have a lot of units to take advantage of Chrono Porting with. But he is he is getting a couple of pods at about the 1026 mark. This may end up meaning something if he's able to Chrono Port them back. This triad is out of the way. No far pods have come back to try to deal with it yet. So it looks like Jericon actually has managed to get a Chrono Port up before, but he didn't it didn't stay up there. It wasn't the timeline, it got removed. So he is not actually probably it was a octopod jumping back to help defend the base. But he's not having any Chrono Ports going on yet, and Pearl on the other hand, has not chronoported anything recently. But like I said, he does have a lot of damage dealt. He has pretty much destroyed the main base. Main base is gone, but because Jericoon has an independent triad, he will be able to send back some units from there to defend his main base. Maybe not save it, but it's possible. He might just be able to save it. And no, it looks like... Okay, it looks like Jericoon actually has lost it in the red timeline. Or sorry, went t red time wave. If he's able to pull back... Gets him to jump back here. He might just be able to get out of this, but he doesn't have a lot of current energy. He has no Arcticus, so he can't use the Arcticus Dispatch to save him time. And he did have a Semi-Pod come back, but it did nothing. That Semi-Pod was unfortunately completely useless. So, Jaratwin's gonna... He had half a dozen Semi-Pods, though. I'm not surprised... Sorry, I'm surprised he didn't send them all, or didn't get them all going back. He doesn't have a lot of current energy. He has no Arcticus, which is probably why he only sent back one. But really, it's quite important that he... And now he's going for just an attack closer to the present. He is still in the playable past. The Faros are tearing apart his heavy pods. They are not going to be... Yeah, his heavy pods are not going to be able to stay alive. The Faros have to completely destroy them. So, Perlox is just a matter of him finding Jericho's base and ultimately destroying it. Because his main base... Jericho's main base has been lost. His secondary base is the only thing that's keeping him up right now. He didn't actually lose this 
base here in Swingland. It looks like he did get some defense units to get, take care of that Faropod. So Perlox is going to have to deal with this, but Perlox looks like he is opting to deal with this once again by using Chronoporting. And he... No, 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 maybe not. He's in slow-mo. He's not in... He is not paused. He is very near the unplayable pass as well, so he won't be able to Chronoport too much. And that was Jericoon's Chronoport, actually, but it looks like Jericoon... That Chronoport didn't actually amount to anything. He does have a lot of base class units, however. Jericoon does have a lot of base class. He really needs an Articus, though. He has... Well, he doesn't have a lot of resources, but he does need an Articus in order to be able to actually do any mass chronoports, unless he wants to go really close to the present. It's just very difficult to go close to the present and do the chronoports he needs to do to save himself. As you can see, his main base is actually completely destroyed in the unplayable past. He does have some more units coming in. They pretty much just took damage and did nothing to you in the timeline right here. Nothing has changed. So, Perlox now destroying this expansion here. Jericoon's only hope of staying alive is keeping this triad hidden, but he really doesn't have enough. He has no resources for RPs. He is pretty much dead in the water right now. There is nothing he can do. Perlox is just going to be sweeping around the map trying to figure out where he is. Once he finds... Once Jericoon is found, Jericoon is going to lose this game. He has no RPs. He can't convert any of that QP to LC, which he'd need to build more RPs. And now Perlox has found it. Perlox has found the base and will be able to destroy it. So Jericoon has lost the game at this point. And he's currently pointing back as well to just, just to put the nail in the coffin, making sure that Jericoon doesn't have any units he couldn't otherwise have. And... Actually, it doesn't even matter. It looks like the forces came in anyway, and Perlox doesn't even need to jump back in time to deal with this. He's... He has destroyed it. So yeah, that was the game. That's... Game on a map we have not seen in a very long time, Kratoria, which has, like I said, been improved since this particular version, but... It's an interesting map. It's surprisingly kind of small for its size. I didn't actually expect that to happen. But yeah, a lot of rushes that didn't see coming, and... Both players really see coming. Actually, it looks like Jericoon is not completely down for the count yet. He does have a couple Octos coming in. They won't be able to build... No, sorry, they will be able to build RPs, because he does have those Octos. At the time, when I mentioned he couldn't build RPs, that was because I didn't see any Octos for him. But he actually does have three Octos coming in. They will be able to build RPs. He does have the five LC needed to actually build those RPs. However, he won't be able to build any additional Octos, and he won't be able to even use these Octos. They are getting completely destroyed. Perlox is going to be going back to try to just take care of this right now. And it looks like he does have another set of chronoports coming. Or not. No, he just paused and re his order. I'm surprised he's pausing without chronoport. Normally, normally when players pause like that, they are planning to chronoport. That's why it actually comes up, because the chronoportation... Oh, he is actually planning on chronoporting. I'm not sure why it's... Huh. That's interesting. Okay, that would explain what's going on. Apparently, chronoporting is messing up for him. That's unusual. Anyway, it doesn't matter, though. Jericoon has lost the game. Jericoon has actually surrendered. And that was the game. I hope you enjoyed that. And have a good night, everyone.